So is this a secret about, about your log of coffee kind of from the standpoint, or are you going to put it out or is this just something oh, that you can put it out? I, I've, I love talking to people about it too. It's not something I'm afraid to explain or talk about. It's just something I usually don't for the longest time. I just never shared the entire list to people. Cause I was like, sure. that was so long and, it wasn't, I don't know. It was just something I love to do as like a, or give as a gift. So like if you said, Hey, I'm going to Salt Lake city or I'm going to Auckland, New Zealand, or I'm going to Dubai, any, anywhere that I've ever toured and had a coffee, I've written down, I have a whole entire list, which hopefully to see if this camera can pull it up, but I would always just give, you know, I copy and paste, send them over. And, uh, I'd always get a nice review and a big thank you for, for like, wow, I would have never known that there's this coffee shop in this random mall in China, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, I love it. And it, there was kind of discussions about like maybe making a blog or something about it. But then again, it would just, um, once I have the time, I think I will, because they upkeep on making sure that the place is still in business. You know how many times we've gone back to a city and it's gone. It's like a little place in Denver sure. that was there that I loved. And now it's it was just there for the the one time I was there. You know, well, when the, when the world gets back to normal from a, from the standpoint of traveling and being able to go see these places and go where you got, you know, to, to come, get off the plane and oh, mm -hmm. where am I going to go right now? I check European coffee trip and I caught and I check Sprudge, which basically covers off your two, your know, North America, your Europe. And then, you know, Google will help a little bit as far as what's local and what's best rated if you're in a rush. But that's cool. I think with the creation of Patreon and some of these other things that you could have a little bit of a thing going here, Frank, where you could have the Frank Sidoris Patreon it. and you literally like people got to pay you for your coffee guide. Wow. <laughs> I never guide. thought of that. That is so yes, fun. There you go. Well, the, that ability, the that access at any point to be able to, I'm in, I'm in Bali, Frank, where do I go? Oh, just go yeah. around the corner here and there you go. And yeah. Well, here, I'll yeah. show you this. You can see it on the screen. Hopefully, We're going to bring it up. We'll give you a look at that list. Yeah. How many are so, on there right now? LA. And you just keep going all, just everywhere. So if we stop here randomly. So you got uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Toronto. Lord, Lord, <laughs> Tund Lord Thunder and Bay. Okay. Well, well, well let's, re let's, go, awesome. let's go regions then while I have you on the phone. And while I have you here, then uh, what do you got for Vancouver? What do you got for Vegas? Okay, here we go. Let's see. See what I got for Vancouver. I only have two, so forgive me. But uh, revolver, of course. Is that how we? Yeah, that's that that's basically on everyone's list. Yep. Okay. And then uh, hopefully I'm saying this right. Rocanini. Haven't been heard about it though. R o c a n i. Wait, let me see. R o c a n i n i. Yeah, and. It's crazy because I remember it was, is that gas? There's gas town. Yep. Gas town. Gastown. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm trying to think because there was a, a oh revolver. I remember it now. I went with uh, Todd's kids. Yes. <laughs> that was a good time. It's sort yeah. of a thing. Everyone's like, hey, you win in Vancouver. It, it's it it has that rep now in Vancouver as you know being the spot to go. Uh, I think amongst a lot of the publications and things like that. So that's mm -hmm. definitely there. There's tons, obviously in the burbs. There's some well, great I say, stuff. That's, that's where I, I, what I love about my list is that like, say I'm in Grand Rapids or wherever, or Vancouver, for example, like yeah. I have two places here and over the la over the years, I feel like I've, uh, you'd think I'd have more for uh, one of the, a city like that, but it's crazy. I end up, um, you know, you know how touring works. It's like if you don't have enough time, it's like you're only in and out, and it's like you have just this much the amount of break between sound check or something. It's like you got to go in, do what you can. But uh, what I love about the list is that I have friends like you where I go, okay, well, here's what I got. What do you think? And then right. you have four other places that I write down, and then I go down there, and then some they either all stay on the list or they don't. You know, and uh, with you, obviously, they would all stay, but um. Not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, well, people, people are reaching out to me and saying saying things, but uh, I, I I default to Fitz uh, on some things when it comes. Well, most things, but the, when he right. was the one that that's started the journey for me, uh, uh, you know, one of the proponents that started the journey for me moons ago. From the standpoint of like the first advice that I got mm -hmm. was to always make sure when you're looking for coffee to make sure that they've spent the money on the machine. 
So oh, yeah, you yeah. got pour over. I mean, and you know my feeling on Tim Wendelbow, the Tim Wendelbow. Well, just, just say, look, I have, uh, wait, where is it? Let me bring Come it up here. Tim Wendelbow. I have it in the middle there. I, my Oslo right there. And Coincidentally, then, Tim will be on the yeah. show next week. So there we go. That's he's coming awesome, back. Dude. He's coming back on. But we, um, that uh, coffee sent me to the moon, man. I was, I was on it, fire. It was so it the good. Best? Isn't it, it the best? It's really the best. And people are like, what is this Tim Wendelbow? I had, um, uh, Friends of mine that sent me out uh, some for my birthday, they, they shipped it in. So thanks, Tombs. Nice job. Um, well, Vegas. They were, Let me answer your Vegas question yeah. for coffee. So, 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 but Fitz's advice was, uh, we'll go to oh, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Fitz's advice was make sure that they spend the money on the machine. So in Tim Wendelbo's case, which we'll, if you guys tune in next week, I'll show you some video of it, but it's yeah. a full AeroPress cafe. So they've spent the money on the machine to get the temp- water temperature perfect. They've spent, you know, they've got the grinder, they've got everything, but you've got to make a commitment to go in and do it. So that is that side of it. Involved, like the the people behind that are working on the machine, like totally. Obviously, they need to know what they're doing, but on top of it, um, they just have to be nice people, like just friendly. I love more than anything going into a killer coffee shop that has a name that people know are is like the place, and I love when I could talk to them, ask them a question about something and they're just thrilled to respond. And, and the least, uh, the last thing I want to deal with is walking in there and this guy is just instantly like just out of gas. Doesn't want to talk to you about it. Doesn't care. He knows he's the barista in town. It's like, I, I can't stand that. And that, that goes across the board for so many reasons, like in, in uh, a guitar store, anything like that. I, I can't stand it. So when the people are as, as <laughs> as they are at Tim Wendelbo, it's like, and they know it's legit and people, they want to talk about it. It's like, come on, it's it's such a huge part of it, man. Like, I can't tell you how many times, uh, just New York coffee shops too. Like, I think it was La Colum. You've had there. You've yeah, La Colum, yep, yep, yep. And this is before it was like everywhere, before it was, their coffee was sold at like, I don't think they sell at Target, but like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, they, they've exploded. They're doing really well. Like. They, uh, I remember I had a little bit of a, you know, hey man, this is cool. What, uh, you know, what what type of machine is this? I've never seen this espresso machine. It's just kind of like, uh, whatever. It's a, you know, they just have, they have no time. You know, that's the worst. <laughs> We've got uh, Sarah Kay watching us. Uh, who says she's excited for this this chat that oh, awesome. we're having? So hello, Sarah. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for for tuning in. Now Vegas, tell us about Vegas. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, I'm just the beginnings of my coffee experience. I could, I could date it back to, um, an ex-girlfriend who was a barista and <laughs> she, she worked for, you know, Ely coffee brand. Absolutely. It's what started me on it. Okay. So there you go. We have the same experience there. So yeah, you worked at a place at Caesar's palace and it was owned by these two uh, British guys and they, they had all, it was like a really fancy, like crazy affogato, all, so, all sorts of, you know, fun drinks and all that, which I was like, I got to try all of it. Like I have to have every single thing. And I wasn't dating her yet, but I was trying to date her. And so right. I was just going there drinking whatever she was making and it was hilarious. So then uh, as time goes on, I just become just such a huge fan of like the most legit coffee. And as, as time has gone on since then, which was like 2009, the coffee shop as a whole has become much more of a staple for, Sure. downtown parts of cities you know down you know what i mean like uh gentrified areas like come with a coffee shop it's great so <laughs> you have uh the first place that that really blew my mind um after all those years of experience uh, was a place called public us so it's the word public and the word us put together so um have you heard about this yet before i have going not to- i have not Okay, because we have a lot of, I'll tell you the, the other places you got to go to, but I just want to tell you the number one first because it's just, it's, there's so many reasons why it's cool. So there's a place in Amsterdam that I went to called uh, Back to Black. Okay. Been there. And yeah. Okay. So they have a machine by Spirit. Spirit's the company. And yep. either that's the name of the machine or the name of the model, I forget. But anyway, I was like, that is the coolest machine I've ever seen. Up, up to date and I was so excited about it. I talked to them about it. They said, yeah, you can only get it here in the Netherlands. I believe they're built in the Netherlands and uh, maybe they come out of Germany, however that makes sense. But they, 
I was just so excited about it, took photos. And so before I come back home to Vegas, I was telling Allie about the experience. And she's like, yeah, there's a place uh, that just opened up downtown called Public Us. You got to go check it out. So day two after I got home, we go straight to Public Us. And we get inside and I couldn't believe that in my own town, that machine from Amsterdam sitting right there. And it's the <laughs> it's even bigger. It was insane. And so yeah. I get to know the owner really well. We become really close friends. And um, that place just not only is there coffee just next level they won they won something like the it was like this barista competition it was insane they they won like second place in the states and uh they have that machine and the food is amazing it's just like i love that place that's that's the most legit i think you can get in town then there's a really really cool place called vesta uh with a v as in victor v-e-s-t-a that's killer then you have like uh, the long-standing um, Sunrise Coffee, which turned into Mothership. They own; they're all over town now, and you know I know the owners there as well. It's it's great. I just, you know? I just had a Jessica Castillo on uh, Castillo on a couple of weeks ago, and Jessica is um, has a as a site had a pod and, and a site called Coffee Dates with Jess, mm-hmm. and her series kicked off with the owners of the Mothership. Oh no way! So, yeah, so she she was raving about it. I haven't been there. I mean, it's been so long since I've been to Vegas uh, mm-hmm. that uh, I've got. I'm going to spend a day just getting caffeinated. I guess <laughs> the next time to. I go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same. There's oh. there's just. I'm trying to think of. Um, hold on, I have. I didn't want to have to consult the list. There's a couple new ones, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dark Moon. That's another one. That's good. It's uh all over town, dude. The, Oh, you know, the fact that you have, I have to say this because I I would feel bad not mentioning, even though there's the nose in the air coffee fans. And then there's the people that tour like you and I, and we could sit there and we can agree. I I believe we've talked about this, that you love consistency. You're if you're on tour and I can't find something at this random airport in Italy, that Starbucks is going to taste like Starbucks and we can, we can do that. That's okay. Sure. So there's a place called Samba Latte. They don't touch public us. They don't touch Vesta. Those are the places you go in mothership. You go there. That's where you got to go. But if you are in this specific part of town and you need something that's not Starbucks, you go to Samba Latte. There's like two of them in town now. <clears throat> and I know the owner there too. And you know, I've had a lot of meetings there. <laughs> I got to check them out. <laughs> A good place like i don't yeah. care you know, they're they're consistent they're they're yeah, good yeah. but it, the number one for me is public us and then vesta is the next one you got to go to they get all you know they they really uh both of them like to they're all about community public us is like that's their whole world is community in vegas and i was born here so i love that like that's i gravitated towards it you know and vesta is great too they they all try to they try to source locally which i appreciate so you got to do it if I could yeah. recommend anything, those are the places. My buddy, uh, Jay, Jeremy Gersey, a Vegas guy too, has a whole bunch of stuff uh, in some of the hotels there too. So Vegas, uh, great for coffee, not just gambling and uh, and all the other stuff you hear about. Oh, Vegas, Vegas is everything for coffee uh, now, which sounds like it will be a uh, caffeinated trip for me next time. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, like a question here. Yeah. What do you we're think? Gonna get a, we're going to get a question here. That's right. Okay. So, Sarah weighing in our friend thoughts on Starbucks macchiato versus traditional macchiatos. Thank you for the question, Sarah. Go ahead, buddy. I'm, I'm a black, I'm a like black coffee Americano guy. So for me, I can't totally weigh in uh, on the macchiato, but um, well, yeah, you, you I, go ahead. I'm going to have to say that traditionally uh, I have, it's not even the same. Like I feel like those are two completely different drinks where traditional macchiato where in Italy, I think in Milan, like Brent and I, you go for it and you get, and it's just, it's like this big, it's very yeah. small and it's, you just slam it and it's perfect. And it's like, that's everyone in Italy. It's so funny. They're like, we don't just like all of our friends in Rome. They're like, you don't sit down and have a coffee. You go in there and you slam it and you leave and you go to work, you do your job. <laughs> so, so those yeah. macchiatos, I'll say those are amazing. Those are killer. Like those are just like, if you want that just boost and just one hit of flavor, that's the shit. I love it. But 
um, Starbucks macchiato is, um, I don't even think, I don't know how else to say, they're not the same thing at all, but sure. I can still respect a Starbucks macchiato for what it is. It's like, I had those as a kid. I used to just get those like crazy. <laughs> I drank those like a monster and then, you know, your tastes refine and I still can't, I, you know, if I'm craving one, I'll probably go get one. But uh, I'd say traditional, you got to do it. That's like, that's just next level. But I will say this though, and Brent Fitz had to have brought up the Cortado to you, right? Well, uh, my first good. Cortado I ever had was with Brent Fitz. It was it, it was at Voodoo. Uh, we had it at uh, in Australia when I saw you guys down in Australia that time. Dude. So we went out, we snuck out, and he's like, "All right, I'm going to introduce you to the Cortado," and away I went. So I am. Um, I've okay. I've recently, uh, you know, upped my coffee system at home. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the Bre Breville Barista Express from the standpoint of like being able to do and try to practice. I Is that like a big like? Yeah. Uh, one group grinds it, it grinds i got two i can i can uh, i can do it's got two different porta filters it's got single it's got double wow it's got everything it's awesome. got a it's it's cool it's a good it's a great entry level kind of machine it's in that it's in that 800 range that i did not pay 800 for thank but good uh, for you though. but That's there we good. go it's uh but it's in that sort of mid-range if you want to get there and don't want to break the bank but i'm yeah. still mastering the art of the latte cappuccino milk thing and i'm i'm so not a fan per se of milk in the coffee for me still. I, I love just the pure taste I of coffee. So, I, so I'm going, like, but we'll get there. You know, you know, you never know as I get, as I get closer to that journey uh, uh, of adding milk and lattes and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. I change all the time. I, I sure. feel like my taste, it's like my, I, I think the, the go-to guaranteed, like wherever I am, I'm always going to get an Americano or a long black. It's like the same, you know, I will always long get, black. It, except I, Italy, I Italy, you're Italy. You're not really allowed. They, I mean, the Americana was named there, but they, right. don't, they don't like, you know, you just want to take that espresso and run and get out of there. Exactly. And I know it's so funny. And, uh, there was a, it's sunrise coffee. When I used to go there exclusively, um, a friend of mine was a barista and she made the, the greatest piccolo ever. And so piccolo, mm -hmm. if you've never heard, you know, uh, it's just a tiny cappuccino. It was just, they're all so, it's funny how coffee orders are essentially Mexican food. It's all just same thing, kind of rearranged a little bit. <laughs> Most of the basic, the basic Mexican cuisine is all very comparable as far as how you just, uh, ratios of certain things. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, you have, the piccolo, which is this tiny little incredible cappuccino she would make all the time. And I would get it like yeah. twice a day. That stuff was next level, but it's essentially a cortado too. I don't, I don't know. Like I have to, I would love to have a chart just, just for reference. So I sound a bit more educated because I've had them all, <laughs> but I forget the exact ratio and what makes it the, you know, uh, do you know the difference between a Gibraltar and a cortado? You ever heard this? No, because I don't. I don't do them. So, but I, I should learn as I'm learning. That's what this is for: is educating. So, what? Why don't you educate us? Went to about, I don't know, maybe 20 different coffee shops that tour and in Europe, I believe, and you'll see Cortado or you'll see Gibraltar, and it's the same exact thing, but it depends on what glass you use, I believe. Oh, that, but I'm that is the exact definition they said to us. They said. Because there's a, the glass company, Gibraltar or something. And so they, oh. that's the thing. It's this tiny little perfect Cortado glass. It's all glass. about the cups. It's all about the cups too. I, I, and as I was going through, it's like, oh, you, you know, if you're going to serve, you got to serve it in the right cup. If you get, it's like anything, I'm guessing. If, you know, mm -hmm. I, when I was a whiskey head back in the day, it was like, you can't drink it out of that. You got to drink it out of oh, this. You gotta, you I know. know, I know, I know. It's funny. Coffee and scotch and uh, anything. It's like the, the difference between a plastic cup Mm -hmm. glass porcelain just oh my god what a game changer but you can't drink whiskey out of porcelain that's just not that doesn't work that doesn't work <laughs> even though it's it's better than plastic isn't it traditionally it's like i don't know porcelain 